access to multiplayer should be free. If you're paying to access multiplayer on most games, you know, I'm not talking about subscription-based games. I'm talking about 95% of the games that you play. If you're paying for Xbox Live, if you're paying for PlayStation Plus in order just to play all of the game that you purchased, then you're getting ripped off. I'm getting ripped off. And nobody wants to hear that they're getting ripped off. But I'm going to tell you why you are especially on Xbox. Now, I've talked a little bit about this in the past, but I've never really hit head-on the counter-argument to this statement because whenever I talk about this, people always say, well, I don't mind paying for Xbox Live because it's a good service. I don't want it to end up like PlayStation Network where it's not so reliable. But I'm going to tell you why that belief is completely wrong. And I'm going to explain to you why you paying has absolutely no impact on the uptime of Xbox Live. Now, let's be clear. I am not against Microsoft having a subscription fee. Xbox Live Gold actually gives you some pretty good stuff. They give you free games. They give you good deep discounts. They've given you access to full retail games in the past, like last year. They made uh, Sunset Overdrive where you could download the full game and play it over a few days. Those are all great benefits. And it's not about the price either. They could drop the price of the subscription down to $5 a month. And it still would not be right to charge you to play online multiplayer. So my entire argument in this video is solely about making the multiplayer portion of it, and chat, free to anybody who plays and owns an Xbox. Back last year, I did a video on why games cost $60, and I broke it down for you where your money's going. Part of it goes to the retailer selling that game. A portion of it goes to shipping and distributing cost. Part of it goes to the platform holder, meaning that even if you buy a game from a different publisher, whether it's EA, Activision, Ubisoft, whatever, if it's sold on Microsoft's Xbox, then Microsoft gets a portion of that. If it's sold on PlayStation, then Sony gets a portion of that. And also a portion of it goes, of course, to devs and publishers. And part of it also goes to pay for servers. When you buy a game the entire experience of that game is built into the cost of that. Multiplayer included. So, you've already paid for the servers. And by having Sony and Microsoft charge you extra for the online content is just as anti-consumer as other practices that people openly complain about, like DRM, if not more so. Most of your games are not, I repeat, not hosted on Microsoft servers. If you're playing a Battlefield game, you're using EA servers. If you're playing Call of Duty, you're using Activision servers. Why else do you think that sometimes there's some games where people can't get online and play, like Destiny, for instance? Some people may not be able to access Destiny for a period of time, but they can still log in and play other games. That's because those Destiny servers aren't hosted by Sony or Microsoft. You've already bought the hardware, which is the console, and you've bought the game. And those are the only two things that you should have to buy in order to play and experience that game. PC doesn't charge you for multiplayer. Nintendo doesn't charge you. PS3 didn't charge you. And, I mean, look at PS4. Even though you're paying for it now on PS4, does the experience seem like a paid service? If they took any money and invested it back into servers, I think it had to be for PlayStation Now and their streaming service because it didn't seem to go to the overall stability of PlayStation Network. There are services out there that you don't ever pay for that stay up more than a service that you're actually paying for. 
If the argument is true that if we don't pay, then the service is going to be like crap, then why don't PC gamers complain all the time about not being able to play online or Nintendo? You have to understand that Xbox Live is hosted on Microsoft's Azure network, which is a farm of servers that Microsoft has invested billions and billions into, and they're located all over the world. Microsoft is a software company, but they're also a cloud and server company. In fact, they're one of the top 10 companies in the entire world when it comes for servers. It is their job to keep those servers up and running because they're also hosting not only just Xbox Live, but they're hosting hundreds of thousands of other businesses. They're hosting other Microsoft products like Office and Skype and OneDrive. And by the way, speaking of that, and kind of going back to the point about how the PlayStation Network goes down more than an actual or non-paid services do, think about Skype. Do you have to pay for Skype? No. And I'm on Skype almost all day long. And I can't recall the last time that it ever went down. I can't recall the last time my Gmail went down. Or other sites or applications that I use that I don't pay for. I don't expect them to go down more because I'm not paying for them. I expect those to be up because it's a service being offered. And you also have to realize that Xbox Live Party Chat is also hosted by Skype. So you can use Skype on your mobile, you can use it on your PC devices, but you move over to Xbox and all of a sudden in order to party up and play and chat with your friends, well, then Microsoft is going to make you pay for it. For companies like Microsoft, providing a quality network that doesn't go down is their entire business model. So it's not like if you weren't paying for Xbox Live, Microsoft is going to say, well, you know, we're going to make this a crappier service because they're not paying for it. We're going to shut off some of these Azure servers. We're going to close down some of these buildings. We're going to send some of these people home. No, it's their job to keep it up and keep it running. And again, most of these games that you play are just connecting to Azure to send some data, but you're not actually playing on those servers unless it's a Microsoft game or where a dev is actually taking advantage of Microsoft servers like Titanfall did. So, Xbox Live is coming to PC. PC players are going to be playing the same games on the same servers with the same people on console. And just today, they announced a new feature on the Xbox One app for Windows 10 where you can start up a party chat and talk to people either on the PC or on Xbox One using the same party system. So you're using the same features, you're playing multiplayer the same, yet the only people who bought a console specifically for gaming are being charged extra to game. Think about that. Only the people who bought the hardware specifically to game are being charged extra to game. How is that fair? I was looking over Xbox's voice page where you can go and vote on what you want Microsoft to do with Xbox, and I found one thread that had a lot of votes. And they were begging Microsoft to charge PC gamers for Xbox Live because they said that would only be fair. They said, look, we're paying for Xbox Live. PC players should have to pay for it also. No. The only fair thing to do is to make it equal play across platforms and give both platforms free access to multiplayer and chat for all games across the network. This would bring in more people to the console, would it not? Which, in turn, is going to increase revenue by having more sales, 
It's going to increase the players online because I know a lot of friends who stop playing because their subscriptions run out. And if you have more friends on one system who are playing, well, then if you have another friend who's looking at a system, they may be more inclined to actually go pick up that system because all their friends are playing. And also because it makes more sense to not have to pay extra for multiplayer. Microsoft can still offer Xbox Live Gold and all the benefits that you currently get can still be there. They can even add some. More free games, more discounts, more access to exclusive demos. And people would pay for it. I'd probably even still pay for it. But the number one reason why Microsoft should stop charging for multiplayer access is because it's the right thing to do. The only way to make this fair is to stop double dipping for your internet access. And I feel the same way about the PS4. I don't think people should pay for either. Especially for the quality of service that they've been receiving. But I do think Microsoft is in a better position to actually do something about it. And I do see more hypocrisy on Microsoft's side. And so that's why I'm calling them out. And they're also the ones that started all this. So what I'm asking is for Microsoft, for you, to support equal play. No one should have to pay extra to play a game they already purchased on a dedicated device that they bought for gaming. Your quality of service isn't going to change. It's their job to keep the servers up. And if you're really for the gamers, if you really want to bridge the line between playing on consoles, PC, or mobile, then you have to make it fair for everybody. That does it for me, The Red Dragon. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Are you listening? Damn.